Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Yesterday I worked a 28 hour call. Today I'm gonna to make a video on how to really crush it in residency. Let's get into it. Now, whenever somebody asks me about how residency is going, my mind instantly goes to that MCAT ad that you've probably seen on YouTube that goes, the MCAT is hard. In regards to residency, you really take that clip and just make it say this. The residency is hard and residency is important. And put that out of the way, let's really talk about some must haves and lifesavers in residency that truly have saved my butt my first two years of residency and hopefully it'll do the same for you. So first let's talk about some of the best apps that you should have for residency. Now I've made a full video on some of the best apps that I use right here. And so that's really where I go into more detail. So definitely check that out. But here, as you guys can see, I have a medical folder that I have in my phone that have really my favorite apps put into one place. Some of my favorites include MixApp. And MixApp, if you're unfamiliar, is basically the equivalent of UWorld, but for residency and preparing for things like board exams that you have to take and license exams that you have to take as an actual physician. Um, so this is something that I'll do when I have some downtime and I'll quiz myself on various things. And all these questions that are clinical vignettes that ask me about very nuanced things and then give me explanations, very similar to UWorld. Other resource that I really enjoyed using, especially when I was brand new and started intern year, is MD on call. So if you're not really sure how to take care of certain things and you get paged for your patient having a headache or having nausea and vomiting or having pain and not really sure like what should I give them? What's like the best thing? Should I give them IV, PO? Can I go to an opioid? Like what type of things should you be considering and doing? Um, this nicely breaks it down. It is a paid app, but I only had to pay for it once and install my phone. And sometimes I still use it because it's been a while since so I've managed one specific problem. So it's a great app to have my phone. And two other apps that I really enjoy going to, obviously up to date, if you are a medical student, you have used this as your Wikipedia. So for example, I was looking on just the confirmation of treatment for H. pylori in patients and the various types of treatment. So you can quickly read and have a nice little paragraph about that respective topic and then have various links that you can jump to. And there's a few other apps that I have in this folder that I go more into depth on that best apps for physicians um, video that I've made. So definitely check that out to get a full inside preview. Next, in regards to residency must-haves you should consider are high yield techs and the respective field that you're going into. So for example, I'm in internal medicine, so I'm gonna share with you some of the techs that I've used over the past three years. And for certain fields like ICU, which I really didn't do as a medical student, but then suddenly you have to take care of patients on ventilators and with pressors that are really, really sick. I wanted to make sure I had a good text that I could easily refer to. So one of my favorites, and I'll put all these links down below, is this book right here. This is the ventilator book. So if you at all have to ever manage somebody on a breathing machine, a ventilator, and really Want to know all the various features then this is definitely a book i recommend checking out it's super short very easy to read um, i think i finished this book in like three or four days um, and you can easily come back to this so sometimes if i'm on icu rotation i just put this in my backpack so if i'm like forgetting how to manage a certain patient or certain settings i can just go back to this and it's super helpful similarly if you want to learn about more things such as icu care here is one of my favorite books that i use when i was starting out so this is the little icu book which is definitely not little at all as you guys can see definitely very oxymoronic but it is very high yield so you can flip through it and learn about anything such as acute kindred injury or um, ARDS or platelets and plasmas. So I would definitely recommend kind of keeping this with you to be used as kind of a textbook. And if you're very nervous about ICU, you can go to those topics that you just don't know anything about and learn about those first. And then as you're going through your block and your rotation and for the remaining topics, you can come back when you have some downtime, which for ICU, let's be real, doesn't really happen. And then lastly, as like a broad general kind of topic, things to know, again, I'm in internal medicine. So Mixhap always makes kind of a board basics review for whatever specialty you're in. So I'm in internal medicine. So this is the book that I was given by my institution um, but basically you can kind of think of this as like a step up to medicine version but for residents I have pictures very helpful highlightings that are already in there um, but it's super high yield and it's honestly not that much different than something you had in medical school except it definitely focuses on management more but it's a nice textbook when I'm on my internal medicine like general wars rotation that I keep in my backpack um, and I read I'm probably will be reading this more and more this year as I have to take my board exams and license exams as an internal medicine physician about a year from the making of this video so wish me luck and then finally the book that I'd recommend regardless of what specialty you're going into is this book right here called Being Mortal by Atul Gawande. Now this book really gets into the nitty gritty of how we should take care of patients, especially those who have very poor prognosis, those patients that are dying, as well as those patients that are getting older and type of things that we should be doing and communicating as physicians, really things that we don't always get the best education with in regards to medical school, but you definitely have to know when you're practicing physician. It's by far one of the most recommended books for brand new training. So if you haven't read it, just check out the link below. It's a pretty quick, easy read, uh, but I promise you it may give you a few pearls that you can then you start using for your really, really sick patients. So next up in terms of residency must-haves you should consider is really high quality apparel. Now, this is 
this is probably not talked about enough, but you're going to be working three to seven years of residency. You really want to make sure the things that you're wearing are going to be both comfortable as well as functional. Now, I know when I started residency, I actually got some scrubs given to me by my institution with my name on it. I felt great, but they're just baggy and not really the most comfortable or attractive looking where you go into work and feel like you're confident. So thankfully, when I started out, my wife gave to me for my birthday a pair of figs and you don't have to buy figs by any means, but they're high quality scrubs that one, allow you to embroider your name the way you want to see it. So these are my favorite um, in personal color. I'll definitely be getting more in the future. But in addition to being very comfortable, they're also very functional. One of the things that I hated before is having scrub bottoms that just never had any pockets. Like why do people do that? I could never put my pagers and my notes and my pens anywhere. But thankfully after getting my pair of scrubs, now my pant bottoms have like six to seven pockets, which I don't really know what to do with all of them, but it's definitely better to have more than less. So I definitely recommend for residency slowly, but gradually grow growing your attire that you can wear at work, feel comfortable, and then allows you to have that functionality for sure. In addition to what you actually wear, make sure that what you walk on is also very functional. We don't always think about how many steps we take in a day, but for me, for a normal shift, it's anywhere from 10 to 12,000 steps. So having a functional shoe that's very comfortable, these are my Adidas. I don't really wear those surgeon shoes. I personally think they're ugly, no offense, but they're kind of ugly. But these I like, and so these I believe are like the ultra comforts. I'll link them down below. Um, but in addition, I also kind of found these like memory foam sole inserts on Amazon. They're like 12 bucks and it just feels like you're walking on clouds. So it doesn't matter how many steps you take in a day. They're super functional and I have like three pairs of these, which I can look good, but also make sure I don't wear them out. So again, make sure your shoes are also comfortable in addition to your apparel, super underrated, but also just makes you go into work feeling good, looking good, having that little bit of swagger. Maybe you'll do your job just a little bit better, just a little bit. Now the next residency must have that you really need to have is a nice system to kind of keep all your dates and to-do items in one place. So I personally use my phone for everything. So as you guys can see, I have a calendar that I use here that's used through Google Calendar and then just syncs to my phone. So I can see not only my shifts, but also things that I have for things like the business. So if I have a coaching call coming up with any one of the students that I work with, it will be linked down below as well as any personal events. So having that calendar front and center on my homepage on my phone works really well. And a lot of you guys have probably seen um, the things that I've shared with Notion. I'll link below and link right here a video of how I use Notion to simplify my life. Um, but it's also things where I can just add a quick to-do list um, and then that gets transferred into my Notion system. So every day I wake up and I'm like, oh, these are what I'm gonna have to do for both residency, personal, as well as academic life, um, all just put into one place. Your life gets really busy with residency. You still have personal responsibilities and now you have adult responsibilities like insurance and bills if you didn't have those already. So having that in one place that you kind of use your own system is gonna be super necessary and super effective. So if you wanna see my own personal system, you guys can check out this video on how I use Notion right here, step-by-step, step, and I'll also link it down below. Finally, to end this video of residency must-haves is quality technology. This goes super underrated and not talked about enough, but you are now a full-time physician. You are somebody who's going to be relied upon and you can't really use your technology like you did as a medical student for the reason that you weren't able to do your job functionally. So one of the things you definitely need to have is a high quality phone with a good carrier and service plan. This will vary depending on where you are in the world and country, but to have a phone like I did when I was in medical school, that doesn't work in the hospital is like useless. You know, people are going to page you, people are going to text you and you wanna make sure not have the excuse, oh, my phone wasn't working, sorry about that. So make sure you have a high quality phone. This is the OnePlus 8, I've had this for two years um, and it's super high quality, but it also has the most important part, which is the battery lasts a lot throughout the day. I think like 12 hours is what I'm currently getting for it um, with heavy use throughout the day. But having a phone that is relatively new or high functioning that can get you through the day and doesn't kind of like drop calls, miss text messages, is going to be super and on a similar note, other pieces of technology that you use on a daily basis, things like a high quality laptop, are definitely things that you need to invest in. Now I've made a full video on this right here on the best laptops from medical school, but they also transfer over to residency. My favorite that I currently still use to this day is the HP Spectra Laptop 2-in-1. It's not talked about enough, but you will often be using your technology from home to do your work, whether it be finishing notes because you didn't get to do them at the office or at the clinic or in the actual hospital, coming back and having a reliable laptop that can then connect to your database for your EMR and your hospital is super important. So I have a laptop that is fast. I have an internet speed that is fast. And then if I ever needed to look up patients for an upcoming day and upcoming rotation, I can do that without feeling like my technology is getting in the way. And as a resident, you're super busy. So you never wanna say, oh, my technology didn't work. I have to go into the hospital to make this work. Just make sure you invest in something high quality now that's gonna last you years and years down the line. Those guys put together are some of my favorite residency must haves to really make the whole process a whole lot easier. Now, if there's any questions that you have about any of the categories that we talked about in this video, or if there's something that I missed, make sure you drop your comments down below. Anything that I talked about in this video is also included 
included in the links down below in the description. So make sure you guys check those out. And if you enjoyed this video, then I have two places for you to go to get even more step-by-step -step help. One is our free Med Vault library that includes both video courses and eBooks and guides that we have completely for free that we've created and collected throughout the past few years. So make sure you guys check that out. That'll be linked down below. If you want even more step-by-step -step advice to really crash on your medical journey using the best strategies for studying, productivity, time management, as well as board studying rotations all in one place, then definitely check out the Med School Domination Bundle. That way you can prepare and really crush it to get into the residency you ultimately want. But with that being said, guys, if you did enjoy this video, all I really ask is just taking that half a second to hit that like button. It really supports the channel, helps it grow, gets this video and channel out in front of more people and really appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, also consider hit that subscribe button and notification bell to be notified when future videos go out. If you enjoyed this video, but you're still a little bit further away from residency and you want to really crush it on your medical journey, then check out this video on how to use Anki like a pro. I promise you, you'll enjoy it as well as this video on how to study like a pro. This one's actually my personal favorite. So check out these two if you're interested, but as always, thank you for watching the video. Thank you for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you guys on yours and I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care, my friends. Peace.